Let's start with the story that has been dominating our world for the last few weeks. That, of course, is Gio Reyna's ongoing transfer saga. Here's the latest. These are comments from Borussia Dortmund manager Eden Terzic that came after Dortmund's 3-1 win against Bochum on Sunday, where Reyna actually played the last half hour or so, many thinking that was going to be his last game at Dortmund, but the manager maybe sees it differently. Quote, I expect him to be available to me Friday. I haven't heard anything else. Gio is under contract. Gio is our player and did well when he came on today. Worth noting, the transfer window in Germany closes on Wednesday, so if he's still there on Friday, that is news. And this comes amid reports out of Germany that talks between Borussia Dortmund and both Nottingham Forest and Marseille are close to breaking down. For more on this, we welcome into the show our good friend and colleague, Julian Laurent. Jules, thanks for staying up late with us here on Football Americas. Let's get right to it. Uh, what's the latest here on Gio Reyna? And what's taking so long? I thought George Mendes was a super agent. Yeah, me too. Me too, Sebi. I mean, we'll go, we'll go back to why it's taking so long and why this is not done yet, because we've said many times on all our shows on ESPN that this, this, this is did, that should have been done on January the 1st. It's pretty easy, but let's talk about the latest. You, we heard that in Terzic, obviously, saying that he wants to stay. Dortmund want him to leave. Joe wants to leave this week, this month. The problem is, as we said, that it's taking a bit longer, I think, than everybody expected. Sevilla are still pushing hard to sign him. Marseille, I think, right now, maybe not in the favourite anymore. And then you still have Forrest, who obviously are very much tied up with George Mendes. And I don't know if it's on Joe's, Joe's side and Claudio's side, where they just taking their time to decide. I think there might also be more negotiation between clubs, between Dortmund and all those three clubs that I mentioned, who, for me, right now, are... The favorite. If he was, if he was to leave Dortmund, it would be for one of those three clubs. As of tonight, the problem is it's still not done, and time is running out now. And why is it taking so long? I don't know. Does he get cold feet? Maybe. Maybe there's a little bit of that. It's the fact that he's been coming on and did okay for the last two league games for Dortmund, even if it's still not much time, playing time. I mean, but he's still coming on. Maybe that is kind of making him think a little bit about his future. I don't know, but this deal should have been done on January the 1st. It's not good for him to stay. We all agree on that. I think he agrees on that too. And I still don't understand how on January 29th he's still a Borussia Dortmund player. What are the chances here, Jules, that no deal gets done? And, and where does that leave Gio at Dortmund in a club that he wasn't playing in and he's made it known that he wants to leave and the club wants him to leave? Where does that leave Gio? Today, someone said to me that for him, and he's quite involved in who's trying to sign him, that it feels more and more like no deal will happen, so that he will mm. stay at Dortmund, which I think will be terrible for Joe, terrible for the US national team, of course, because they need him to play regularly and more and regain all the confidence and start putting on good numbers in terms of goals and assists and all of that. And But if that was the case, I don't know. I think, in a way, he would be a, a super sub. Is that enough at his edge? No. We've said many times, we've showed the stats, he played less than 300 minutes. This season in the Bundesliga, he's got one star. This is, this is ter just terrible. He needs to go out and play somewhere and enjoy his football again. And at Dortmund, they have so many players in his positions. The competition is so hard. They just obviously signed Jadon Sancho not that long ago. That I'm just, I, I just don't think there's a future for him there. That's why I really don't understand and I can't work out why right now he's still a Dortmund player. But it feels more and more likely now, somehow, because we were convinced 10 days ago he would go. Even last week we reported on ESPN that this is it, it's getting closer now, we've got a bit of an agreement there and there, and yet six days later he's still a Borussia Dortmund player. So, I don't know, the next two days obviously will be key because as Sebi said, Wednesday is the deadline anyway. So we will know very, very soon, but I, I really don't think it's a good news if he stays. What's the perception of Gio in Europe? Because here in the States, we think of Gio, young, you know, prospect who tore it up in the Bundesliga when he first broke out into the scene as a 16-year-old. And I'm thinking 50 million euros, that's a steal for a player like Gio on a platform like Dortmund. What's going on here? Should U.S. fans be worried? What's the perception in Europe? What's the word around why this isn't happening? It's really interesting because you're right to point out how good he was when he was younger and, you know, I think at the time a lot of scouts and sporting directors for t from top, top clubs in Europe were, were looking at him. He became an option, a bit like a Christian Pulisic when he went from Dortmund to Chelsea. That kind of move 
was very available to Joe, I think. And then the injuries, the fact that he lost confidence, I think what happened in Qatar didn't help him at all in terms of his reputation in a way and becoming a bit of a problem in a dressing room at times, which you know how it works in football. It's very easy. You get that reputation, people call, speak to each other, call each other. How is he? What is he like? What does he do? What do... And, then, and then suddenly people say, well, yeah, it's, that's not for us. Not now. Let's see if he matures. All, all those kind of things that we've heard for many other players. And right now, I feel the clubs that are keen on him because they believe there's a talent there, if he gets injury free, of course, at the level, at the, just the, the tier below the top, top European clubs. That's why we're talking about Marseille, Sevilla, you know, Forest, those kind of clubs. They're, they're good clubs. And some of them, Marseille, Sevilla, played in Europe regularly, usually, that kind of stuff. But not, not anymore the likes of Chelsea and United, maybe, and PSG and even Bayern. You know, a player like Jovena at Dortmund, making, doing really well there, he will become a Bayern Munich player. Some, you know, this is the pathway in Germany anyway. If you do well in that league outside of Bayern, Bayern sign you. But right now, those clubs are not looking at him anymore for all those reasons, which, in a way, will take away a little bit of the pressure, I think, on, jo on Joe's shoulders. And yet, if he, if he goes to a, a, a middle-tier club and smashes it again, then that opportunity will come again to go to a top club. But right now, those top clubs, I think the, the sheep has sailed a little bit for Joe Reyna. All right, I feel like we've uh, taken a pretty negative turn here. There is still time left in the transfer window. Uh, Jules, let's focus in on the three clubs that are being discussed, Nottingham Forest, uh, Marseille, and Sevilla. I wonder which of those three you think is the best fit, because I know Herc thinks that Gio's walking into the Nottingham Forest side. I happen to think Morgan Gibbs-White is a pretty good player, and if he doesn't move, that's, that's tough competition for that number 10 role. I'm very interested in your perspective on Marseille, because of the teams linked here, not only are they the only one that's not in a relegation fight, they're chasing Champions League, and they're in Europe. And I'll be honest, I don't watch a ton of Marseille. I know you do. Yeah, I mean, for Forrest, I agree with you on Gilles White, although I think Joe can play wider. Uh, they can play with two tens behind, behind the striker as well. That's, that's possible. So there's a lot of things you can do with a fit, informed Joe Reyna with his versatility. So Forrest, I think, would not be a bad move to go to England. The language, of course, would help compared to a different league and a different country, a different culture, all that kind of stuff. So I think Forest would not be a bad idea. And clearly, since Nuno came to the club, they play a little bit more attacking football than under Cooper. So Forest, not a bad idea. Sevilla, I would not touch. I would not go <laughs> near. I think right now, if you like Kike Sanchez Flores, great. Good for you. I saw them at the weekend again. And even if they were maybe a bit unlucky, they're just very dysfunctional. They're about to lose Rakitic. And maybe, by the way, the Rakitic deal out of Sevilla could be key in Joe arriving because I think they need to sell first before signing anyone anyway. Um, so that could, be, that could be as well what's holding on a little bit that deal. And like you said, Sebi, let's not be too negative because there's still, there's still time. And deals can be very quick. You take a private jet, you, you go there, you pass your medical, you sign, it's done in a few hours. So it's still very much possible that he moves. And Sevilla could well be waiting for Rakitic to go to Saudi Arabia to sign Joe as a, as a kind of a re replacement. Not position for position, but as another player coming in after Rakitic came out. For Marseille, he would work under, under Reno Gattuso, of course, who will be very demanding. And maybe that's a good thing, by the way, for Joe, because I think that could help him get to the ne next level in terms of what you, ask, you are asked to do as a professional. And that kind of manager who's on you all the time to make you improve and make you progress, that might be not a bad idea. They're, they're fighting, obviously, to finish top five, top three in France. There's some really good players there, from you know, Aubameyang to Ismail Assar that we saw with AFCON, with Senegal, Iliman Ndiaye as well was there with Senegal. So you've got, you've got a really good squad, I think, there. And I think he could flourish in Marseille. The thing I would say about Marseille, one is the environment around the club. The fans, yes. they live for the football. They live, they're, so passionate, they're so passionate that if you don't do well, you know, I know some guys who used to play there, they don't do well, they go to the bakery and they don't serve him. They say, huh. no, you're not good enough. I'm not giving you pan au chocolat, baguette and croissant. I'm not saying that this will happen to you. I'm just saying it's a very difficult environment if you don't do well. Mm. And also, there's a lot of players in his position. Again, as a 10, there's Arit, wild players. We talked about Sa the Saar. NDI, Korea, Joaquin Korea is, is, is a Marseille player too, although he's injured right now. So there's a lot of competition. But really, if you aim for those clubs, 
competition will always be there. And that, that can't, that, you can't fear competition if you want to play in those clubs anyway.